for tuning in 100.5 FM Sunday Morning Glory. This is Pastor Daniel Ortiz of the Fort Concho Mission Church. We're glad that you chose to worship with us today. We're going to start off right with our scripture, Psalms 118.24. Now let's say that together. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Let's sing that. today. Today we're going to be getting into your word. Please, please brush aside any distractions that we may be going on in our minds today. Help us focus upon you. Open our spiritual eyes, ears, and hearts to be receptive to your word today. Speak to us like never before. Talk to us in ways that we've never been talked to, Lord, and it just Help us apply this in our everyday lives, dear Jesus. I pray that you just use this word today, that we can be a shining light in a dark world. Dear Lord, we lift up those that are in pain. We lift up those that have tragedy this morning. They're in their own personal storms. You're a God of redemption. You're a God that makes things new, Lord. We call upon the scriptures today. We have not because we ask not. We're asking today, Lord. We're asking today for your goodness and for your hand, Lord. It says in your word, when we call out, you incline your ear unto thee. So we claim your goodness today. In Jesus' blessed name we pray. Amen. Now, if you have your Bible, our scripture reading today is going to be Luke chapter 7, verse 36 through 50. It's Luke chapter 7. 36 through 15, what I'm going to speak about today is the touch of God. Now, when we become believers within Christ and we accept Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior, you notice sometimes with some individuals, you see a drastic change in their life, a change in their behavior, a change in their words, a change in their actions all across the board. As if something is transforming them, as if they were a new person in Christ. Or could it be the touch of God? A lot of times when God touches the heart, he changes our emotional pattern. He changes our behavior pattern to do things that we normally didn't do before. The touch of God is something that is incredible and amazing. And when we allow ourselves to open up and open up to Jesus, it makes a tremendous difference in our behavior, in our words, actions, lives, all across the board. A new creature is beginning to come to fruition. A new creature in Christ. And that's what God wants us to be. He wants to renew us what we should be. A lot of times we get programmed what we shouldn't be by watching things that we shouldn't watch, listening to things that we shouldn't listen to, be around places or groups that we shouldn't be around and that rubs off on us. We have a lot of programming or deprogramming to take away because of this fallen world that we immerse ourselves into daily. It's important for us to get the scriptures inside of us, and that's where the spark begins. That's where the change began, and it all starts with a simple touch, the touch of God. Let's look and see what the scripture says today. Luke chapter 7, 
verse 36 through 50, starting in 36. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to have dinner with him. So Jesus went to his home and sat down to eat. When a certain immoral woman from that city heard that he was eating there, she brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. Then she knelt behind him at his feet, weeping. Her tears fell on his feet, and she wiped them off with her hair. Then she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, now get this, he said to himself, he didn't say it to anyone else, he said to himself in his mind, if this man were a prophet, he would know what kind of woman is touching him. She's a sinner. Verse 40. Then Jesus answered his thoughts. Did you catch that? He answered his thoughts. Simon, he said to the Pharisee, I have something to say to you. Go ahead, teacher, Simon replied. Then Jesus told him this story. A man loaned money to two people, 500 pieces of silver to one and 50 pieces to the other, but neither of them could repay him. So he kindly forgave them both, canceling their debts. Who do you suppose loved him more after that? Simon answered, I suppose the one whom he canceled the larger debt. That's right, Jesus said. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, look at the woman kneeling here. When I entered your home, you didn't offer me water to wash the dust from my feet, but she has washed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You didn't greet me with a kiss, but from the time I came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You neglected the courtesy of olive oil to anoint my head, but she has anointed my feet with a rare perfume. I tell you, her sins, and they are many, have been forgiven. So she has shown me much love, but a person who is forgiven little shows only little love. Then Jesus said to the woman, your sins are forgiven. Amazing. Her heart was touched by Jesus. Touched so much, it drove her to tears. She kept kissing his feet, cleaning his feet, and she gave the best of what she had, a rare perfume, and placed it on Jesus. She loved him because she saw what he was. She saw who he is. We see who Jesus is. We saw who he was through the scripture. Let him allow him to touch your heart, to touch and touch your spirit, to touch your mind, to touch your soul. Allow this to come in and to change. Hebrews 8 and 12. For I will be merciful to the unrighteous and their sins and their iniquities. I will remember no more. This is a precious promise that God gave to each and every one of us. We confess our sins and he will remember them no more. These, these things will be tossed into the sea of forgetfulness, the scripture tells us. As far as the east is to the west. Never to be brought up again. That is the thing about repentance. And true repentance, when you turn it over to God, it's into the sea of forgetfulness. It is his precious promise. He has given you a great plan for your life. Each and every one of us, there is something special and unique that he wants for you. But do we open our ears, our minds, and our hearts to the word so we can find what that is. And I'll tell you what that is. 
It is being an example, a godly Christian person. What is a Christian? Someone who's like Jesus. Just sharing the good news. And what is that good news? What Jesus has done for you. That's it. What has Jesus done for you? And you share what he's done. To encourage others. Others just need a ear to lend. Just to hear them out. A word of encouragement. You to be there. You might be the only Jesus that they ever see or come in contact with. Last week I mentioned that sometimes pastors aren't allowed into certain areas or even certain homes. They say, no, 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 it's okay, thank you very much, and the door is closed. But you may be allowed somewhere where a pastor isn't. You may be the only Jesus that, that person ever sees. That's why it's important for us to share his goodness and what he's done for us. When you do that, you'll see a change and it'll be magnificent. I want to encourage you, look at the phrase that's on the screen and take it to heart. Jesus didn't come to make bad people good. He came to make dead people live. He wants to bring them to life. Without Jesus, you're dead and going through the motions. With Jesus, you are alive. You can experience things. Let's look at Colossians chapter 2.13. And you who were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses alive in Jesus, but without him dead, going through the motions. And you truly were a dead man walking without Jesus. Without Jesus, I want to tell you, if you don't have him, there is a place called hell, and it is real. There is a fallen angel. His name is Lucifer, Satan, and he hates you because you are in the image of God. Hell is real. Satan is real. They hate you. And Jesus came because God had something in store for you that was beautiful. And it is salvation. And it is a free gift for all of us. Salvation. Jesus is that free gift. Oh, how sad and how, how wrong it is. From some pulpits not to preach about hell. Some pulpits not to acknowledge there really is a devil. There really is Satan. It's true. The churches that don't do that, they don't love you. I'm going to tell you now. They love you if they tell you what's out there. A parent will tell you what's out there if they love you. There's hurt out there. There's pain out there. I love you. Let's make good choices. Let's make right choices. What does a good parent do? He instructs the child of the dangers that are out there and tries to nurture that child and to put them in the right direction. That's what a good parent does. But a good brother and sister in Christ, they tell you there is an eternity without God out there and we don't want you to experience that. There's a free gift and that free gift is Jesus and all it is is a choice and a decision. I'm not forcing this on you because you have a choice. He loves you so much. God is not a rapist. He's not going to force his love on you. He loves you. He loves you so much. He gave you an opportunity to choose. And that's what true love is, free will. He's given all of us free will. But you know what? A brother or sister in Christ that loves another will tell them, you know what? There is consequences. And the consequences without Jesus is death. And that's what this is. You're dead without Jesus. You are. There's no joy inside. And look, honestly, look at some of the people. Some of the celebrities, they look miserable. They have everything. Money, mansions, beautiful cars, houses. And sometimes you see it on their face and they're so miserable. Some of us think, if I had that, I'd be smiling all the time. But would you? Or would something be missing? Ask yourself these questions. Is there something missing? Am I missing a joy? I simply want you to experience a joy that only Jesus can bring. 
There is the touch of God that brings a joy. When we get into the scriptures, we understand this touch of God. It touches our minds, our hearts, and it brings us a joy to know that he's with us every step of the way. 1 Samuel 10, 26. And there went with him a band of men whose hearts God has touched. When he touched their hearts, they dropped all they had. Let's follow Jesus. Let's follow him. But for us, let's follow him with all that we have. But you know what? You have all things to gain. He will give you more patience, love, care, consideration, compassion. He changes your taste buds for life, for the words that you say. He naturally changes that. Eventually, more and more each day with your relationship with Jesus, he changes who you are. And I'm going to tell you, it's not for the worse, it's for the better. For everyone involved, your children will see it, your family members will see it, your spouse will see it. What's different with her? What's different with him? It's Jesus. We've seen many men transform who they were and become ministers. You're like, wow, that guy's telling about Jesus? Wow, that man has turned his life around. I remember how she was. I remember how she was. The touch of Jesus. The touch of God. Let's allow him to transform us. Let's allow that relationship. And that's what this is. This isn't religion. This is a relationship with our Lord and Savior. This is what I'm giving today. A relationship. Let's strengthen that relationship. Transformation. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. I want to remind you who you are in Jesus. You're a new creature. Then people may bring up your past, but you don't live there no more. That's not you anymore. Say, no, no, that's who I used to be. Jesus has made me who I am today. And that's who I used to be. But praise God, Jesus is giving me better each and every day. That's your story. That's what you tell. That's what you give. That's how you encourage. So you know what? You could be there too. I want to encourage you. I want to lift you up, brother. I want to lift you up, sister. I want to pray for you. I want you to experience goodness in your life. It's enthusiasm that rubs off. It's contagious. You know, you smile. Sometimes that's contagious. You could smile and somebody else smile. Somebody else smile. A gift of a smile, cost, it costs you nothing. It's free, but it can be contagious. Just like laughter. In a group, somebody starts giggling and laughing, and you know somebody else can't stop, even to the point where you can get in trouble, because it's contagious, laughter. But you know what? Your spirit of joy can be contagious, too. If you share that and people see that, it can be contagious. Now, on the other hand, negativity and ugliness can also be contagious. We've all known that person that walks in the room and just brings down everything. Because they're angry, upset, or in a bad mood, or, and it just drops the whole feel of the room. The same thing can happen with joy. Let's combat it with joy and be a new creature in Christ. The touch of God brings forgiveness for those who repent and believe. It brings a cleansing power to those who yield themselves totally to God. The transforming touch of God, I want to encourage you and remind you, makes everything new. We receive new life in Christ Jesus, and that comes new desires new activities, and a new strive for life. That is what transforms. <clears throat> On top of that, did you know when you accept Jesus, you are being ordained for life in Christ? John 15, 16, I have ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit you have the power and authority that Jesus gave through his name. You have the power and authority to encourage others in Jesus. You have the power and authority to pray with others, to lift others up, to minister to others, and be there for others. Not just the pastor, 
Like I said, you might be the only Jesus that that person ever comes contact with. You might be the one, the only one allowed into that home to be a shining light for Jesus, to be the encourager for the Lord. You have that opportunity, so be that shining light. He's ordained you in the name of Jesus and given you that authority. I'm telling you, you have the authority and power. And the first thing that Jesus gave you, the scripture says, is you have the power and authority to cast out devils and demons. That's the first thing that Jesus said. He gives you that power and authority. Now, that's a lot of power and authority in the name of Jesus. Because why? There is power in the name of Jesus. And because you're a child of the king, you have the ordination and the authority to use the name of Jesus. Amen. Each and every one of you has the authority to use the name of Jesus because he's given you that authority. Because you've chosen him. He ordains you. Many Christians fail because they do not work for God. Some only think only ministers can witness to the unsaved and win Christ, which isn't true. You can tell people about Jesus. You can minister to them. You can encourage them. You might be the only one that can. So understand you are ordained because of the name of Jesus. Jesus unifies. The Lord unifies us. How good is it for brethren to dwell together in unity? Psalms 1, 13 and 1. We can come to the house and encourage each other. We can come to the house under one thing, Jesus. Because what he's done. Brothers and sisters, this is a hospital for sinners. None of us are perfect. We all need Jesus. But we're here to encourage one another. The days are hard. And each and every one of us has so many things going on behind closed doors that no one knows about. No one sees your struggles. No one sees your problem. The Lord knows. But for us to be sensitive and say, you know what? I'm praying for you. I'm encouraging you. Because I too am going through things. I too am going through pain. I too am going through my storms. But you know, it does pass. And when it does pass, be the encourager for that brother and sister. Be there for them and say, you know what? The Lord got me through this. Let me pray for you. I know you're going to get through your storm too. This too shall pass. Conquerors. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. More than conquerors. He is for us, not against us. He gives us, remember, he doesn't give us more than what we can handle. There is just enough. And he gives you enough authority and power to get through everything. We are conquerors in the name of Jesus. Romans 8, 37. Let's keep that and etch it in our minds. Say, no, 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 no. I can get through this. We are more than conquerors. The Lord has equipped me. To take care of my household, my relationship, my children. He's helping me every step of the way with my church. Whatever it is, let's turn it over to Christ and let's call upon his name. And Lord, be with me with every decision and choice. He is a heal, healer. He heals. Matthew 8 and 3. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him. Not only that. He touches and renews and heals our minds, our hearts, our bodies even. There are still miracles going on in this day. Amen. You know, in Brazil and Amazon, 14,000, I said last week, 14,000 were baptized, saved in the Amazon and by Brazil. But I'm going to update that. 14,500, and they're having miracles take place over there. Because God's not dead. He is alive and he still moves. You can look that up, but it's up to 14,500 now. An additional 500 have come to know the Lord and been baptized in the Amazon. God is reaching out across the world, letting everyone give a chance and the opportunity, a choice, a free will. His hand is moving. Scripture reminds us of that. He will. There will be a great revival going on. There's also a great falling away that happens in the churches. 
But you know what? All of these things have to take place so we can see and know his prophecy is true. It all is true. Prophecy is what got us here today. There was a prophecy one time of a virgin birth. There was a prophecy of a man on the cross. These prophecies come to pass and that's why we're here this morning. There's more prophecies going on and coming to pass each and every day. Fish in the Dead Sea. Fruit trees in the desert. These things are coming to pass, but they're gentle, loving reminders. His word is true. Be ready. Be ready. The touch of God brings physical, mental, and spiritual healing. Matthew 9, 29. We receive God's touch through the reading of his word, praying, believing, accepting, obeying, and taking him at his word. Jesus is king. Jesus saved us all. Jesus is for us all. Let's choose Jesus today. Let's choose his word. Let's choose his goodness. These prophecies and these Bible, Bible prophecies that are coming today, they're his gentle wooing reminders for each and every one of us. I'm coming soon. Be ready. Be ready. I'm coming soon. You want to be ready? You want to know? He's only one prayer away. It's a free gift. He doesn't want anyone to throw a free gift away. What do you have to lose? Just choose Jesus. I promise you it will be the greatest, best choice you'll ever make. He's a friend sweeter than a brother. I want to tell you he's there for you and he'll be there every step of the way. Let's go to the Lord. Let's choose Jesus today. Dear Heavenly Father, we understand what you did on the cross. We understand you paid the ultimate price for each and every one of us. Your blood was shed to take away the sins of the world. You conquered the grave and you arose on the third day. We choose Jesus today. We invite you in. We ask you to be our Redeemer. We ask you to be our Savior today. Our Lord, lead us and guide us over all of our choices and decisions. Help us choose the right choice, the right decisions. Lord, be with us today as we start a relationship with you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, brothers and sisters, if you said that prayer, we believe that you've been born again. We want to encourage you, find a Bible-believing church. Get plugged in. If you don't have one, come visit us. The Fort Concho Mission Church, 500 East Avenue D. Get into that Bible. Start with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I promise your journey will never be the same. If you don't have a Bible, come visit us. We'll give you a gift of a brand new Bible from our ministry to you. May God bless you until next week.